Let's talk about the first time that I have rage quit a game. Yeah. Like, ever. I actually think this should be somewhat interesting. I recently purchased an Apple TV and a an Apple Arcade subscription for also one game. talked about it many times on WAN Show. Yes. There was a lot of excitement for this. Yes. Uh, and it was the follow-up to what? It was, uh, well, it's not a follow-up to anything, but it's a very, like, traditional-style RPG uh, like JRPG and the the team behind it, uh, which includes Hironobu Sakaguchi uh, of Final Fantasy VI fame, sort of like one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, also Nobu Matsa, I, I can't remember how to pronounce his last name, I'm sorry, but the composer for basically like every Final Fantasy game ever. Um, so they're on it. A uh, bunch of other folks from sort of that, that era were like, okay, um, uh, for, for both of the two headliners, they're kind of going, this could be our last game. Um, let's, let's, let's do it traditional style. It's called Fantasian, uh, and it's Apple Arcade exclusive. I eventually gave up on it ever coming to anything else because I realized, holy crap, Apple funded the whole thing. This wasn't a licensing agreement. They actually just funded the game. Um, it's also just for user context. Uh, on the Apple App Store, it is rated 4.7 out of 5. Yep. On RPG site. I don't know what that is. It's rated 9 out of 10. And then Google users have given the game a rating of 94%. Or 94% of users liked the game. I guess it's a Rotten Tomatoes style. Thing. And it's absolutely beautiful. So the environments are actually done in dioramas. So they are. these are all miniatures. Oh, wow. And then the characters and um, elements of the game that you can interact with, like chests... Um, like even even uh, like the the fight uh, environments are all done in diorama form. It is gorgeous. It's utterly unique. Like is this an actual diorama? That yes. Then you have digital characters that, that then move they around scan. It? They oh. scan it and then digital characters move around with it. That's in pretty it. cool. Yeah, it's 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 beautiful. It's a cool idea. Um, it definitely has some problems. Uh, I wouldn't say that it takes a pr particularly enlightened approach to its female characters. Um, it, so. Mm -hmm. For better or for worse, it's a very traditional JRPG, but that's, frankly speaking, not what put me off of it. What put me off of it was the fact that it was mobile first. Now, you might be wondering, if that was the issue, why did I put over 30 hours into it? And that's a fair question. <laughs> well, you were pretty dedicated, right? You, you bought... You were excited for it for a long time, and you bought the whatever. I bought it was. hardware in yeah. order to play it. Yeah. Um, but the problem is not anything to do with controls. It had full support for controller. Everything was perfect, and I actually spent the vast majority of my time playing it, or actually all of my time, because that was where the Apple TV is, uh, in the theater. So I was playing like on a big screen, no right. problems. Yeah. But I reached about the midpoint. Uh, I think it's the midpoint of the game. It's. I think it's late in part one. I mean, I don't know because I am never going to finish the game. I reached the point where the boss fights started to become hideously unfair. And the vibe that I'm getting is whether this is because it was designed for mobile to keep you playing endlessly so that you'll keep your Apple Arcade subscription or whether it's because it was designed for an all-you-can-eat platform instead of to be sold for $59.99 or $69.99 on a platform like Nintendo Switch where they'll actually get like a, a, an, an enormous amount of revenue that's really easily attributable to this game, uh, or whether it's because Apple just doesn't really understand gaming and didn't invest money in certain critically important aspects of the development process. Whatever the reason is, the game basically falls apart in terms of difficulty curve. And it's not just difficulty. I don't mind playing a difficult game. I don't mind sitting in a boss fight for 45 minutes. But what finally made me just put down the controller, turn off the system, and walk out of the room was this fight with um, some spirit wolf thing or something like that, that basically, I kid you not, you can be half an hour, 40 minutes into the fight, and just with a couple of bad RNGs, be at a, at a, at a, at a non-progression bug, essentially. Uh, because what one of its abilities... Okay, so it's got a few abilities. First of all, a problem with the game in general is that your party is three. Uh, which means that if anyone gets knocked, 
it is now two turns to be back to health, which is a full cycle of your buffs wearing out and their debuffs wearing out where you cannot do anything, so you have to like reset. right? Plus, whenever anyone gets knocked, not only do they lose any buffs, but they also get knocked in terms of their turn position. So they lose a turn. You can't just pick them right back up and then go, okay, but they get a turn, now they can heal, and, and, you're, back in the, and you're back in the fight. So, uh, so this particular boss has uh, a 1-2, where it can knock one of your characters, then take another action. That other action can be to summon minions, those minions then get turns right away before you can pick up that knocked character where they can also summon minions. I believe it can summon up to nine total minions. And then randomly, that, uh, that boss, or not randomly, but every once in a while, and it does seem to be a little bit RNG, it can ca cast a barrier spell on itself that takes 20 hits to wear down. Now, what's really interesting about this barrier spell is that when it casts it, it casts it on itself and all minions at the same time. Oh, God. Now, you Do have... a lot of your attacks, like, cleave everything? You have multi-hit okay. attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most you can do is eight. But in that fight, one of the characters is locked. So normally, you can actually cycle your characters during a fight. There's so many cool game mechanics. Like, the ability to use your entire RPG party in one fight is super cool. And there isn't, like, a turn wait penalty to it or anything like that you can just use your entire party in any combination you want in any battle which is kind of awesome if one of them gets knocked no you can't swap you have them to res them and up. then swap them yeah. It, yeah, yeah um and so i can see why they make you wait after someone's res because otherwise that would yep. be a super that cheap move sense. or whatever else yeah. but the, honestly the boss fights are like so long that you know, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they could have balanced it if they really wanted to. <laughs> anyway, the point is that um, you have one character that can hit for eight. And that character is not the one that you are locked to in that fight. So you must have at least these two. And then you can essentially swap out the other one. And then the most you can do with anyone else is maybe three or four in one go. And that would be to sometimes multiple targets, sometimes to a single target. But that eight one is a single target. Now, you can only do that, obviously, if you haven't, been, haven't had someone one-hitted and then have to spend a cycle picking how, them how up. How often does this one-shot happen, and is it avoidable? Pretty often, no, it's not avoidable. And you were asking about cleaving the barrier. The answer is no. You cannot eliminate the barrier. You can cast barrier that'll absorb up to five hits, but most enemy attacks, other than just like a basic strike will will eliminate your barrier it'll absorb some damage but it'll be gone so it's it's an imbalanced barrier mechanic um it can cast it as far as i can tell whenever it wants on its entire supporting party and so what happened was i knew about the barrier thing i knew that it could hit itself and the other wolves around it but i'd had pretty good luck clearing out the crowd and making sure that it couldn't hit a large enough crowd with this barrier thing and then finally i like i lost this i lost it a couple of times even though i am at the recommended level and finally i had one where it actually cast barrier i should have taken a picture of it because it would have been kind of funny to show you but it's this entire army of completely invulnerable opponents until i can hit them each 20 times and i'm just sitting here going if they play tested this at all that's not fun that's not fair there are strategies you can use. Like I, I looked it up, old school style, right? Okay, how do I beat this boss? And it's like, oh, okay, this one character has an ability that if you happen to invest in that branch in the tech tree and you've played around with it, you'll know it can be useful for this. And it's like a, like a vacuum. It's like a suction ability that takes all the enemies and puts them in one place so that you're uh, multi-hit, so that it essentially you can hit them all in one go. Except even that didn't solve it because I cheesed it. I looked it up and I was like, okay, I'm going to use vacuum. Uh, but now I must have a fixed party. I have to have the guy that's locked, right. the guy that can actually hit for multiple hits. And then I have to have vacuum buddy, um, who's essentially a chemist, which is like, fine, um, but not great DPS. And oh yeah, did I mention the boss has like a ton of health? So it's going to be a long fight no matter what you do. Uh, so, you can, so you can cheese it with this. But guess what? Vacuum doesn't have 100% hit rate. So even when I cheesed it, I, d I, I missed like three of them on a vacuum. And then it cast barrier. And at that point, it's unbeatable. And I'm, I'm sitting here going, well, okay then. Um, there's another cheese you can do. Apparently one of the guys has like a payback type ability. So if he takes a bunch of damage, 
he can pay it back. But that just counts on you managing to crowd control and stay alive long enough. Now, the obvious solution to this, grind a few levels. Once again... Which the, is why you think it feels like the, it was incentivizing staying on the subscription. Oh, it gets worse than that. Once again, the mobile subscription nature of the game rears its ugly head, but this time because it was intended as a, as a multi-part release, right? Like, I waited. I'm like, I'm not playing part one, then part whatever. I've, I want to know how many parts there are, and I want to sit down, and I want to play it in one go. But because I'm apparently getting close to the end of part one, what happens is the leveling curve changes, and the experience that you gain for fighting sort of this tier in you know, this version of the world, this part enemies goes dramatically down. So if I was to try to grind it, I could be playing for hours and hours and hours just to do a, a little bit more damage against this thing when the problem isn't even that I'm not doing enough damage. Like, that might help with crowd control a little bit, and okay, it could make it beatable. But the real problem is that this is an utterly imbalanced fight, and that's it's not fair. Guys, he didn't mean cheesing because he was using characters' abilities. He meant cheesing because he looked up how to do it online. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's cheesy. I, I, li I like figuring things out. Like, there's one, okay, there's one boss that also is pretty... Um, pretty gross. Uh, it gets to cast poison on you every single turn. Not its turn. Every oh. turn, it gets to cast poison on you. So unless unless you happened to get a bunch of like poison resist stones that you can equip or whatever else, you are poisoned literally the entire time. Um, and there are other things you might want to equip that aren't poison. And at that stage in the game, you can only have one of these gems for each of your characters. Um, but you know, I, I I figured it out. I figured out uh, that you can block poison with that barrier. Uh, spell it'll block poison so at least my entire party wouldn't be poisoned all the time just whoever got their barrier knocked down like okay fine you know i can work around that but when there's a one hit that is and it's like a way overkill one hit like there's no amount of leveling up that would make it not a one hit anymore it's just not fun i don't want to just sit and res and just use phoenix downs i find completely random one hit mechanics to be very lazy game design in my opinion um unless there's you know, things that you can do. Yes. Then it's fine. And there isn't. Yeah. Like there, there's another one where I, I had to look this one up too, where you can uh, blind it. Um, and there's like some gaze move that it uses, but at least there were hints. Like I, I, I looked it up and I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so if you blind it, it can't use its gaze ability. But this one, as far as I can tell, it's just immune to everything and uh, one hits you and casts barrier um, on everything. Um, Kuzemchik says, honestly, it feels like Lannis doesn't play many Japanese games. The problem is not the difficulty. The problem is the unfunness of the way that the fight is balanced. And what's really frustrating is I feel like they were almost a victim of their own ambition here because a lot of the game is really creative. Uh, they've done an, an incredible job of making boss fights not just feel like a grind in a lot of cases. Um, and even the random battles, they've got this awesome mechanic where random battles do hit you randomly, but you can enable this uh, device that you carry called a dimension that will absorb anywhere from 10 to five random encounters, and then you fight them all oh, at it once. it piles them all up? You it told just, me about that. That actually sounds super cool. Yeah, so you get way more time to just experience the environments and, and then the fight is probably like really epic and, and the fight fun. is actually way more fun yeah especially because so many of the abilities can be chained or uh can pierce or can be curved and arced and stuff like it's actually really fun when yeah. it's really fun it's just that it's obvious that it didn't get proper qa because when you when you reach a a, a, a non progress i consider a non-progression point if, you're, if your whole party is up and all that happened was you, you know, had an ability that RNG didn't grab enough of those guys and it just can RNG cast this ability that completely ends it and you're like half an hour into a stupid fight. Lots, lots That's of bad Japanese game design. and Korean games expect you to farm. Sure, but so if the, I the, can't even farm. Is the problem farm, because the curve is so low at that point? That's yeah. the core problem. Yeah, okay. so I yeah. can't I can't just grind. Yeah. 
Because the curve's so low. Okay. Like I don't even I don't even mind grinding once in a while. Like that. Okay. So that's another issue. Is there was another one I ran into, which is in this place. If for those of you who have played it, as far as I can tell, not many people have. There's not a lot of discussion about it. But yeah. there's a section called the Triangle of Calamity that I accidentally like wandered into at some point. Sounds cool. I didn't think there was a way to get out of it, so I had to look that up as well because I ran into a boss fight there where even after spending like an hour or two just just grinding, just leveling up, because the issue there was that um, my one of my characters, who I really needed uh, because their abilities are the weakness of the boss or whatever, uh, was way lower because I rescued her way later in the time when the party splits up. Anyway, the point is, I did a bunch of grinding there, and that was when I figured out the, that the higher level ones were like basically not moving anymore. These lower ones were leveling up. Yeah, yeah. But I went into this fight, and I also couldn't win that one, even with grinding, because it also had a cheap mechanic where it splits into three of itself, and it's it's randomized which ones do what. And so if you happen to hit it with an ability that like marks it, um, so you can taunt them, if you happen to hit it before it okay, splits, okay. then you can tell which one is real. But if you don't, and you hit them. They hit you super hard to the point where it's like one or two turns wasted in order to like pick up a guy again. It's like, it's, this is ridiculous. So I went straight from that one over to the other one and the, the, this barrier thing. I was looking at nine wolves with 20 hit barriers on it. And I'm just like, I don't even want to play anymore. Yeah, I don't even want to like play you anymore. You might it's be able to get fun. through this, but it's just like, oh man. This yeah, why, why am I bothering? This isn't, this isn't fun. This and, is one of the reasons why uh, I actually like FTL so much is right. the, the final boss fight, it's very satisfying. Because, mm. like, there's there's three stages to it, and in between every stage, it's a spaceship game, in between every stage, the, the boss will, like, warp away. So you kind of have a second to, like, lick your wounds and get everything kind of back in order. Uh, but you, you can't, like, travel because it's going to come right back and you're trying to defend this base. Right. So you have enough time to, like, if there's literally, like, fires and holes on or in your ship you can like patch it up yeah they uh fantasian has a boss that's like that it's running away from cool. you and you can kind of like, if you wait too long to start attacking it and like catching up to it then it like gets away yeah uh, but if you don't wait too long you you do have a little bit you of time can, like, to like take care of yourself for a second then re-engage yeah i think that's yeah. really cool and and like the ways that the, the the fight evolves over time as you fight it is is interesting um i i have always wanted a, like an ftl2 to come out uh instead they worked on a, another game called into the breach which was cool i'm not particularly super into it but it's cool um i i do hope that they make another another iteration of it at some point i've always wanted it to uh there's if i remember correctly there's eight zones in the game the eighth zone being where the boss is and i kind of wish it at the end of every zone there was like a mini boss of some sort right i think that would be cool um but yeah i don't know CW says, LTT is the only channel I've ever seen that claims they can't read Super Chat. Sounds like a load of bull to me. Uh, we've shown screenshots of it lots of times, yeah, how the times. dashboard didn't work. It actually does work now, but we're, I'm just over it yep. at this point. Um, yep. There you go. If you Super Chat, it'll show up at the top thing for people that are watching on YouTube. That's yeah, about it. so that'll be cool. Um, FTL is really well balanced. Yeah, there's. I mean, like with pretty much any game, there's things that are stronger and there's things that are weaker, but I, I personally find the balance in FTL to be fantastic. And I, I really like how with all the different ships and stuff, you can have these really interesting different feels to, to the run that you take. Okay, here we go. Citizen Bean posts on uh, float plane straight from Reddit. Like, excuse me, 20 barriers? Question mark, question mark. A basically guaranteed instant death attack? 10 plus allies on the battlefield at once that can all receive 20 barriers? This fight is a total cluster f and even with Arrow Rain plus Samadare to try to handle the barriers, it is still ridiculous. Yeah, th those those mechanics don't sound fun to me. Um, like, I, I, I tried every possible combination of things to try to break the barrier. If you could break the barrier, no problem. Let's go. But an unbreakable 20-hit barrier is just stupid. I always hate if you're if you're playing like some type of MMO or even just like a, there's a bunch of these like like four-player RPGs and there's a boss fight. And the boss has an ability where it just like targets one of your party members at random. And it's like, you're dead in 10 seconds. And it's like, okay. 
I guess I'll do what I can for 10 seconds and then just not be able to play the game. Like, this isn't a fun mechanic. Like, could it, tr please, like, try to find some other way to add difficulty to this fight. I don't know what it is. Yeah. You can split the party. Like, there's interesting things that you can do to reduce the amount of party members. But when you take two, one or two party members, don't just kill them. Yeah. Put them in, like, a different scenario. Make it so that there's, like, some hallway they have to... They get, like, teleported back or something, and they have to solo fight through this hallway and to regain with the party or whatever it is. I don't know. There's other things that you can do, but, like... Twitch chat's having a pretty good moment over here, asking yeah. if I tried uh, suplexing the boss or casting Vanish and Doom. Um... You know what? Yeah, sure. There might be like a bugged way to beat it, but I'd rather not play a game than do that, quite yeah. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it just, I don't know. It made me really sad because it was a game I really wanted to play and I feel like it was, it was doomed to not be as good as it could be because of what it is and it, because of how it was funded. If oh, Okay. So I was going to say, if you had yeah. to pick one or the other, do you think it's more the funding, lack of time, lack yeah. of QA? Absolutely. So you you don't think it's more the mobile design? No, the creativity was so high. Stuff. The mobile issue is well, they're they're part and parcel, right? It's built for the subscription model where revenue cannot be easily attributed to that title, right? So yes, you can see playtime, but that doesn't necessarily tell you. And and like I don't know how many people are subscribed to Apple Arcade, right? I suspect that it's a lot less than this would have sold if it had come out as a dedicated release for Switch. Oh, yeah. In terms of revenue. I mean, these are, these are industry legends. And, I, I would have bought it if I was on Switch. And the demand for, you know, traditional style JRPGs, warts and all, is <laughs> pretty high. Like, you look at the number of kind of smaller indie games that are, that are sort of chasing that, uh, that older sort of SNES era style, right? Like... There's a couple that are on my to play list that I am super excited about. But it was it it was an utter it was an utter disappointment, this one. That is sad. Game development's hard. Um And it was just it had so many good ideas. <laughs> yeah. Like really, I was really enjoying it. Music so good. Like just everything about it was awesome. I know I know you sort of already answered this. But if you had some way to just delete that boss, would you do it and then keep pushing forward? Yeah, I'd like to keep playing it, but I'm just worried that it's just not going to get any better. Because it's just such an obvious QA problem. If they had had enough people play through this, they would have found this error. It's, it's an error. Like it is, With, with it how is, their development path went, they might have had to crunch really super hard to get that first act out and had bad QA because of it. Yeah, that's what I suspect. And then, but they, they might not have had to crunch as hard for the further acts. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Thunderclash says, some of the bosses are ridiculously hard to the point that Hironobu Sakaguchi had to release videos in his channel showing how to beat some bosses. Oh, wow. I mean, as long as there are hints, you know, in the gameplay that tell you, uh, then fine, you know, okay, I had to look it up. I don't mind. I, I would rather, like, if I can't figure out how to beat something in a game, which happens, yeah. and I have to look it up, I would rather I look it up and go like, oh, yeah, I'm stupid. Yeah. Instead yeah. of I look it up and I go, there's no possible way I would no have way I ever could have figured known that. this. You were supposed to look at the symbol in the bottom left-hand corner on the bottom of the physical box when you took it home. For, like, it's, no, I don't. Yeah. Screw off. I looked up two things in Breath of the Wild. Um, in like some in the cult uh, headquarters, I looked up how to get through this wall. I was stuck in this room. There's this like stealth section. And did you play Breath of the Wild? You know, you I never part of it. You didn't finish it. I I adopted it as my I'm gonna play this on planes game. And then travel stopped. I get it. Yes. Cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, you, you there's this like stealth section, and I would get to the end room. I'm like, this has to be. This has to be where I couldn't figure out where to go. And then f I, so I finally I was screwed. I, looked, I felt like an idiot because you just have to switch to like your Sheikah something, something. Anyway, one of the walls is magnetic and you can oh, like move it or something sure. or you can throw a thing. through. I can't remember. You can blow it up. I don't remember. But if, you, if I had just turned on like it's like it would be like playing Batman Arkham Asylum, not, not being able to figure out what to do mode. and not using detective vision or yeah, whatever. Right. Yeah. Like just. Felt like, like I, an idiot. I don't mind stuff like that. It's way easier to absorb because I can deal with just me being dumb. 
But the second the thing I looked up fine. in Breath of the Wild is like some, uh, it was some quest or something where you have to find the thing between the thing that looks like a thing. And I found somewhere in the game that matched the description perfectly. And you know how big that game world is? And so I spent all this time like wandering around there uh, just like fighting things and looking for, I, I forget if it was a, a chest or I an entrance to a thing. I never actually played this game either, but I do know all the things you're talking about so far because I had to benchmark it. Right, okay. And I had to find like a benchmarking section. And eventually there was this like room that you could fight in that would spawn exactly consistent enemies in exactly consistent positions. And you could do the exact set of moves against them every time and it worked fine. So I, I remember that. Wait, but from Breath of the Wild? No, uh, Arkham Asylum. Oh, oh, Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm not talking about Breath of the Wild again. Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's this, like, quest. You have to it's, you have to be, like, on a mountain, and it has to be night, and it has to be this, and it has to be that, or something. And I found a spot that actually matches the description. So I had to look that one up, and I was like, I wasn't even mad about that one. I was mad at myself about the stupid hideout, though. Yeah. Super yeah. mad. Yeah. Yeah, Giga Clan hideout or whatever it is. Try the demo, see what you think. I've play, if, if you're talking about Breath of the Wild, I've played a decent amount of it and I enjoyed it. I just, I don't know, my brain never shifted to like, hey, I guess we should play this not on planes. Because my whole thing was like, I'm enjoying this, but I don't want to like sprint through the game. I'm just going to play it when I'm on planes and then we're good. Because I would notice like, oh, I have an eight hour flight, start playing Breath of the Wild, feel like I've still just barely started playing and I land. And I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> I want to keep this superpower. I don't want to finish it. M. Kirsch asks, I think I know what you're talking about. Is it the one from a crossover with another game? I think so. I think it is. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, this is a really good comment from uh, Kornosian over on Floatplane. If you could delete the boss, if the game gets to the point where the only way to advance is to actually cheat, the game instantly stops being fun for me because I know if it gets inconvenient again, I'll just cheat again. I don't want to cheat. I want to play the game. That's a pretty good call. I yeah. want to play the game, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. want to just put in cheat codes. That's not fun for me, right? It's kind of like, uh, oh man. I mean, it's like anything. It's like in sports, right? Like if 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 it's if the only way to continue to play is to just cheat, are are you playing? Are you competing? Are you? Uh, what's the point even anymore then? 